Welcome to the after dinner program with the Peninsula Macrobiotic Community and we've been putting on these dinners for the last 22 and a half years. Every Monday night our chefs Gary Allender, James Holloway, Robin Gillette and Paul Schmidt demonstrate that plant-based eating can be not only healthy for you but gourmet, delicious and interesting as well. In addition to serving dinner, we also serve as a resource for those of us trying to take greater responsibility for our own health. To that end, we sponsor after dinner talks on macrobiotic and other health related topics. In the past, our speakers have included Dr. Benjamin Spock, the famous baby doctor, who used macrobiotics to get himself out of a wheelchair and rid himself from the symptoms of bronchitis. We've also heard from Dr. T. Colin Campbell, the project director of the China study which was the most comprehensive study of nutrition ever conducted anywhere. And its research findings point very strongly to the advantages of plant-based eating. And we frequently hear from a variety of macrobiotic counselors, including Bernard Rona, Lino Stanchik, Patrick McCartney, and others, who speak on a variety of macrobiotic topics. Our speaker tonight is cancer survivor, Marlene Kennebrew. She was diagnosed with malignant melanoma, and after three surgeries, she got a forecast of less than a year to live, but that was more than 20 years ago. She doesn't really have a title for the talk tonight. It's going to be very informal. Uh, she'll be sharing her personal journey, and she'll be talking about how a healing diet, um, how her mental and emotional exercises and spiritual practices can play a powerful role in the healing process. Most of you get to meet her firsthand. Um, before I turn it over to Marlene, I do need to mention that we have a pass a hat policy for our afternoon events. There are some baskets available on the table back there. We suggest a contribution of $5 to $10 for whatever you feel comfortable giving. Ladies and gentlemen, Marlene. Um, the series was called The Incurables. I don't know if any of you um, got to see it. It was only on Dish Network. Um, and the station uh, that was, um, is called Berea. So if you, if you want to Google it, it's www.berea.com. And they still are showing the, this particular series called The Incurables. There were 26 episodes, and you'd be happy to know that about four or five of those episodes, the people had used the macrobiotic lifestyle to cure themselves uh, through non-traditional or non-Western methods, non-Western medical methods. So I'm just going to show you a segment where uh, several doctors are speaking about what my condition was, and then I'll go and start it at the beginning. I actually thought I was okay, and I just went on with my life. I did not explore alternative medicine. She was fine until around 1984 uh, when she began to feel not, not too well. She uh, felt weak and um, she experienced uh, some bowel movement changes and had stomach pain. Marlene's visit to her regular doctor failed to uncover the root cause of the pain. By late 1984, she was losing significant amounts of weight and the stomach pains were, were increasing and they discovered a mass uh, in the colon and the surgeon that operated found that she had multiple melanomas. At that point, you know, she's in the worst stage of melanoma with confirmed visceral metastases, which means to an additional body part. And it actually obstructed her bowel such that Dr. Kasimi had to remove about 20 centimeters of the small bowel. So this is very 
far along. At the time of his surgery, the surgeon informed the family that he could not remove all of the disease and he knew he had to leave tumor behind. He just could not take it all out. Melanoma, like Pac-Man inside your body going around eating you up, it was inside her body. It was all over the body and it was eating away her stomach, her, her, her internal organs. And she'd be lucky if she lived six months. Any form of cancer is a serious... When it all started, um, the uh, one of those doctors uh, was um, female dermatologist was actually my dermatologist, Dr. Marla Engermeyer. The gentleman, Dr. Paul DeRay, was a pathologist who was called in to review my tissue samples at Mass General Hospital. And later, ironically, but I I never think there's any irony. I, things happen for a reason. He sat on a panel at the National Cancer Institute. Some of you may know about the 2002 uh, best case series study that was done on macrobiotic survivors. I was one of the six cases that a panel of MDs and PhDs examined. And that gentleman, Dr. DeRay, just happened to be on that panel and got up in the, after he heard my case and said, oh my God, I looked at her tissue samples 18 years ago, that woman should be dead. <laughs> and the other, the other gentleman, Dr. George Yu, um, got very interested in macrobiotics. Um, his girlfriend had actually introduced him to the Cushy Institute in 1999 and he became so fascinated by the diet and by the survival stories that he was the head researcher who brought the six best case series to the NAP, that panel of PhDs and MDs at the National Cancer Institute. Uh, from that study, there was unanimous decision that there was enough evidence that uh, all of us survived through dietary approaches that it warranted further study, and since then, there's a, a big grant out there looming, and we're waiting for some foundation to uh, go forward and do more research. I was first diagnosed in 1983 with stage three cancer. It was melanoma, cancerous mole on my back. In 84, the mole of uh, the cancer uh, actually uh, metastasized into my neck. And by 1985, as you heard uh, in that little segment, I started experiencing weight loss, stomach pains, and many of my doctors at the time really didn't know what was going on with me. They didn't associate the abdominal distress and the weight loss with my past cancer history. Um, I will reel you forward uh, to early 1986 when I started experiencing dizzy spells and I was given eight blood transfusions and my doctor had asked me to go to, back to Mass General Hospital. My first round of surgery in 1983 was in Providence. My second neck dissection was at Mass General. And so I decided to go back to Mass General to see what was going on by about February of 1986. Uh, my doctor said, after an endoscopy and a colonoscopy, that they couldn't quite see where the cancer was. It wasn't in the stomach and wasn't in the colon, so it had to be one other place, and I had to be hemorrhaging and bleeding internally. So I was wheeled into surgery, a three and a half hour procedure, and I found out years later that I wasn't expected to live through the surgery. And as you heard Dr. Um, you, I believe, say that they removed 20 inches of small intestine, five malignant tumors, <laughs> three 
dissected my small to my large intestine and pretty much sent me home to die. Get your will together, we've got about nine months to live. My spirit was not shaken. I, I did lose um, hope, not totally. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to change the title of my book because that's the title is When Hope Never Dies. Uh, but I was despondent, but I explored other experimental therapies at the time. I was told to get into a form of chemotherapy. I explored interferon and interleukin-2. And I've got to tell you, I'm not standing here and telling you, wow, this, this lady was courageous. She did diet instead. I really wasn't. I was, um, uh, the chances of my survival through experimental therapies was like one, one chance in 10 that I'd live through the therapy itself. So the therapy itself, as I was advised by the doctors who told me about it, was, um, could kill me. My younger brother uh, had actually found out about macrobiotics. Ironically, through a psychic healer, he went to the psychic for um, his son and asked this woman what he could do to help me out. She said, tell me her name. And she looked down and said, my friend is Michio Kushi. This is so ironic because I did not live in Massachusetts. And I want you to tell her about macrobiotics. And he said, what's that name again? <laughs> Let me write it down. Mind you, this is 86. And so he wrote it down, went home, did some homework, got me a book called The Cancer Prevention Diet Book. And he brought it to me and I said, now please, Al, this isn't about prevention. This is cancer treatment. <clears throat> but I listened, sort of. And I'm honest. Um, and he said, I'm, I've made some calls for you, and I'm going to uh, set up an appointment for you to see a macrobiotic counselor in Boston. And I grudgingly went. Um, I had no idea what I was getting into. Now, I don't know if any of you may not. Uh, known what the Macrobiotic Center in Brooklyn was like back then. But you walked this a little old creaky building and you walked up this little spiral staircase and this very, very thin gentleman walked out and said, Hi, I'm Dr. Machman Cowanberg. And I said, Oh boy. And then they took my picture and I sat down in front of him. He was a macrobiotic counselor. He was an MD, trained in Belgian, for those who you don't know Mark, you may not know Mark. And when he came to this country, he studied macrobiotics under Mr. Cushy. And the first thing he said to me was, you are son Paco. Now for those of you who don't know, you know what that means, right? Your eyes are rolling back in your head. You are dying. So, that was my introduction to that. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. <coughs> now, I, I got to tell you, I have to give credit to my younger brother. I, I pretty much tuned out at that point. I was like, do I need you to tell me I'm dying when the medical <laughs> profession has already told me that? And then he started examining my face, my hands, my feet. And I said, this is really a little strange. But I stayed on, and we had about an hour and a half consultation. There was a little sweet lady scribing and taking notes. And he said, he looked at me and he said, if you do what I tell you to do, melanoma is so easy to get rid of. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is really wild. So honestly, I left that office and I I can't tell you I was very convinced, but it was some light bulb went off in my head on the way home, and it was about an hour drive, and I said, you know, this is great. I'm going to try it. What do I have to lose? Uh, I tell you what I had to lose is weight. Now, mind you, 
I was 92 pounds starting macrobiotics. Five, six, 92 pounds. So I read a little ad. It's a little different version, right? <laughs> I read a little ad in uh, at Brown University looking. I said looking for Ori cook who knows Oriental style cooking because I really didn't know what I was doing. So I bought all of Aveline's cookbooks and Wendy Yesko's cookbooks and this sweet lady named Sun um, knew nothing about macrobiotics. All she told me was my mother made homemade miso in Korea. She was Korean and her husband was studying at Brown. So Sun was my co-chef for that whole summer as we burnt brown rice and ruined everything we put on the outside. But we started. We did. We started and had a wonderful time of it. Um, I'm going to give you the detoxifying and the cleansing that was going on uh, because I think that's important for those of you who are new here and some of you are who don't know the healing process that goes on. I honestly did not realize how powerful this diet was when I was doing it. But there were certainly certain signals that I was getting that kept me centered and on the diet. I literally dropped four pounds on the diet, which many of you know, you, you know, initially you lose weight. It's very contractive. And I was about 88 pounds. And my husband looked at me and said, are you sure you want to still do this? And, but I have to tell you, one thing that absolutely changed my whole mind and kept me going was the quality of my blood. At the second menstrual cycle I had post-surgery, 